mean, no. do you feel any hope that Americans and generally people in the Western world can be convinced that rather than taking drugs, these sorts of notions, medicine that isn't physical, as you say, can help? Well, I, I, I do have hope and I'm trying to you know, make hope happen by, we co I co-founded a little company called Rivery, R-E-V-E-R-I. We have digital interactive self-hypnosis to help people with problems like pain, stress, insomnia. We find that that more than four out of five people who use the, uh, the Rivery app for pain control get immediate relief from their pain within 15 minutes. They feel less pain than they did before when they started. Um, the strain and pain lies mainly in the brain, and people can learn to manage their pain perception with techniques like self-hypnosis. And I wanted to make it available as an inexpensive alternative um, to a lot of other treatments for pain that have much worse side effects. So you say pain is strain on the brain, and I think a lot of people would say, okay, perhaps, but I can't think my pain away. Uh, how does how does that work? Well, the idea well, of hypnosis you know, is used to something so physical. Um, we know now from studies using EEG and functional magnetic resonance imaging that with techniques like hypnosis, we can literally change the way the brain processes pain. Pain is a combination of signals that come in special pathways, the lateral spinothalamic tract up to the brain, but it's the way the brain interprets those signals has a lot to do with how much pain you feel. So the brain is the central processing center. And there are athletes who break their ankle during a, a football game who don't realize that they've done it until the coach looks at their swollen ankle and says, what happened? Um, women have delivered children for millennia without chemical anesthesia. And you know, they'll tell you it, it hurts. But it's, it's not a, a kind of pain that they cannot learn to manage. And so the idea that any adverse signal that comes to your brain is automatically going to result in the same experience of pain is simply not true. So how do you do that? How do you help a patient? How do we help ourselves to alleviate pain? Sure. Well, I'll give you an example, Hannah. I had a, a lovely young woman who was seven months pregnant come to see me. She had very bad lower back damage. And terrible pain. And as, of course, as the baby grew, the pain got worse because the, the weight in her upper body was higher. Um, and um, she uh, couldn't take medications because she was pregnant. And I had her, her pain was seven out of 10 when we started. And I said, uh, I got her hypnotized. She was quite hypnotizable. And I said, where do you naturally feel more comfortable, the most comfortable? She said, taking a warm bath. I said, good. Well, we're going to take a bath. So I had her imagine that she was in the bathtub feeling the sense of warmth, a kind of tingling numbness penetrating into her body. And after a few minutes, she looked different. And I said, how are you feeling? She said, I feel better. I feel warm. Um, and I said, at the end, um, how's your pain level now? She said, it's three out of 10 instead of seven out of 10. And But she looked angry. And I said, what are you angry about? And she said, why in the hell are you the last doctor I got sent to instead of the first? She'd have nerve stimulators implanted, all kinds of things that didn't work. And so you can often comfort yourself by imagining yourself in situations where you actually do get relief from the pain experience. And you can trigger those same circuits of pain relief in your brain that you do when you take a warm bath or to take a medication for that matter. And that is something that people experiencing pain can do for themselves they don't need to come to see you that's right they, well it, they, 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 they can, can't come to see you you're in california but they don't need to go and it's see nice you. out here <laughs> no they don't they don't need they, i mean they can and there are many clinicians who are well trained in hypnosis who can help them but my thought is you know i've learned things from helping people that can be used without my actually being there. And so we built this app, Reverie, where you hear my mellifluous voice. I ask a question, you give an answer, the system processes the answer, and you'll get a different instruction next, depending on how you've answered the previous question. So it's as much like being in the office with me as we could make it. And so I guide you through an experience of finding ways that you can modulate your experience of pain, or what I say is filter the hurt out of the pain. 
And uh, for, for four out of five people who use Reverie, they feel immediate pain relief from using it.